we're back. Wait, why did you do that? <laughs> because I like that when you start an episode and we're back. Well, it's, if we're coming. Well, back. We're coming back from commercial. We're out. Yeah, oh, we're coming back we? from. We're coming back from commercial. Joseph, that you, was a. You guys missed hot, the first half. That, that was a hot track, Joseph. What was? Who is that? Uh, that's uh, the Cone Trolls. I just found out about them last week. My friend Ray. I liked it. Yeah. I liked it. I uh, hope you liked it. Uh, you, of course, are listening to KAOP. Uh, this is Accents on Purpose. My name is Danny. I, oh, hey, I'm Joseph. I'm back. I'm still here. <laughs> uh, I just remember, I got the band name. It's the Coneheads. Their album is the Cone Troll. Oh, Cone Troll. yes, the Coneheads. I yeah, like the Coneheads. The Coneheads. I, can't I, I, I was like, as I said, I was like, that's not right. God. Edit this. Edit the whole thing, though. What? We'll just edit out those head parts. Uh, Joseph, how are you doing? I'm good. I, I'm sorry I missed the last two episodes. I got a flat tire. It, it happens. Mm-hmm. How are you doing, Dan? What's up? Uh, not too bad, Joseph. You know, so uh, when I'm not at the studio, uh, I'm working at a record store. Yeah, you uh, work hard. I work hard. You work hard for the money. Uh, I, I, I do. Uh, Swin Cycle Records, 221 Broadway. Uh, come and say hello. <laughs> All right. <laughs> but uh, Share this so, on social media. So, okay, so something really interesting happened the other day. I've experienced, I think, the other half of the story I'm about to tell. Like, I think this happens a lot, but I usually only hear the other half. Are you trying to say you know how the other half lives? Uh, I don't know how the other half lives. Oh. But, okay, so here is the situation. I, I just opened the store. It's like 11.01 a.m., and this uh, guy comes in. He's an Australian guy. Uh, I can tell by the accent. I'm not going to try to do the accent. <laughs> I don't understand why that's funny. I can tell funny. by the accent was just... I know, okay. like, not like anybody was like, are you sure you knew? I, well, let's say, okay, I can tell by the accent. And he, <laughs> he, he walks in and he was, he, he says, my daughter asked me to pick her up some CDs. I'm, can you tell me if you have them? And he opens up his phone to start, like, looking at notes or whatever. And I'm like, oh, I'm really sorry, uh, we don't sell CDs. And as I'm saying this, uh, a woman, I'm presuming his wife, walks in behind him and she just goes... If you don't sell CDs, what do you sell? And I'm like, well, we sell records, uh, DVDs, and video games. She says, like, oh, we'll just get her a record. And I was about to ask, does she have a record player? But then I was like, eh, none of my business. Yeah. And so she she looks at me and she starts like walking in the store and she's like, she says, where's your grunge? Where's your punk? Where's your Nirvana? While she's saying this, the dad says. But she doesn't have a record player. Yeah. So, <laughs> so the daughter doesn't have a record player. And I'm like, you know, I, I love to make sales, but I don't want to do this. And so yeah. it's like, so you know, if she has a record player, I don't think it's a good idea to buy her a record. And the mom says, she'll love it. And, and so and she's like, she's like, she's like, she'll love it. Where are they? And it's weird because she's standing in between two like aisles of records, and so I just presume she. Also, the store isn't. It's well labeled and not that big. Yeah, no, yeah. yeah. It's, it's not like a Best Buy. Yeah. Uh, and so I was like, okay, I'll show her the Nirvana since that's the only band she actually asked for. And I go over and I'm like, oh, here's Nirvana. And she starts flipping through, and she's like, she's like, what's their best one? And I wanted to be like, well, best is subjective, and that's all someone's opinion, but. I didn't want to get into it with this woman, so I was just like, oh, um, this is their most popular one. And I pulled out, never mind. At this point, I I've, I've see that the dad has left the store. <laughs> uh, but then, okay, there's also, there's like, they're with like another couple, uh, like, you know, their same age. And so, you know, she walks up to, she's, as she's paying for it, she says to her friend, she's like, she's like, she's like, and that's going to be the last thing we're buying her. We already bought her too much on this trip. And so... She, Why is she mad at everyone? I know. It was weird, but also... Okay, so let's get this straight. Let's get it straight. Let's get it straight. Set the record straight. <laughs> yeah. she, oh, there it is. She is, like, she is, like, somehow upset that she's bought her daughter too much. Mm-hmm. And the tipping point... But that, point, that was her choice. Yeah, the yeah. tipping point was a record, which she, she, can't, pl- she can't play records, yeah. for a band she may or may not give a shit about. Yeah. Uh, because she may have been asking for like Skrillex CDs. It seems like or... the mom hates her daughter. I think yeah. I don't think her mom hates we her, her mom. too no, much. No, no, no. no. <laughs> but I think she's just like someone who like yeah, she's like the daughter like specifically said I want to buy these, and she also told the dad. So I think she's like dad will not understand. Yeah, yeah. And she's like I specifically want these CDs, and instead she gets a Nirvana record. So I'm imagining like 
me when I was younger talking to a friend of mine and being like, yeah, my parents went out of the country and I asked them, if you see these things, pick them up. They gave me a fucking band that's 40 years old uh, for a format that I can't play. I don't know yeah. what the fuck. Yeah. Uh, and I thought that was really funny. Uh, I thought that was like, just, it's like, oh, so if you were that Australian girl whose parents <laughs> bought them uh, a Nirvana record, email us at uh, Accents on Purpose Podcast at gmail.com. Do you think when she gets it, she'll be feeling down under? Joseph, so you know, our fans really like listening to punk music through um, their AM uh, radio station. Yeah, that's where, I don't understand where else would you get it. I don't get the question, is what I'm, well, I'm saying. saying but I'm just saying, but there's more to it than just listening to punk music on AM radio. Some people fucking uh, buy CDs, some people buy records. And you some don't people go sell to shows. CDs. But, we don't sell CDs yet, I know. But, um... You can't just get your music from AM radio. You have to go to a record store. And I'm really happy about our next guest. Oh, yeah, me too. Tour? Yeah, I'm, I'm, are you going to take the sheet off him? He's been sitting here for the last hour. <laughs> so I have no quiet. idea who it is. Yeah. So quiet. Um, I'd like to introduce Sam. Sam, introduce yourself. I am Sam Gutierrez. And Sam, uh, I met Sam many years ago uh, in Seattle. But he's ditched out on Seattle, and he moved to Idaho. Sadly. And he opened up his own record store. And I think it'd be really fun to interview him about what it's like to open up your own independent record store. And maybe talk shit about some Seattle bands. <laughs> Alright. I want to know specifically <laughs> what it's like to own your own, uh, to open up a record store in Idaho. Oh. Alright, so start from, <clears throat> the end, start from the beginning. You got to Idaho. Well, you go to the <laughs> Chamber of Commerce. What do you say? So we should, we should, we should preface that you're from Idaho. Oh, yeah, I am from Idaho. I didn't just leave Seattle to go to Idaho and be like, oh my gosh, this place is amazing. Yeah. Uh, was raised there, lived my whole life there, so. It, it wasn't like you were driving to Spokane <laughs> and you forgot to get off the X. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Where am I? Uh, what? what am I? As soon as, I, soon as I crossed house. the border, my accent just changed, and I was like, oh my dear. Oh my dear. <laughs> I do declare I'm in a different state. Uh, um, yeah, I guess I had. Uh, Growing up there, we didn't have any record stores in Nampa, where I was from. Nampa? And, yeah, okay. which is like 15 minutes outside of Boise. So I just, I knew that I always wanted one. And I actually remember telling my dad when I was in high school, like, one of these days I'm going to come back here and I'm going to open a record store. Or not even come back here, I'm just I'm going to open a record store here because we don't have one. <laughs> I, I like the idea that you were walking out the door like, <laughs> with, a, with a bag. Oh, okay. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and you're like, one of these days. I'll be back, Dad. No. Oh, I, I was thinking he has a cap and gown when he graduated <laughs> high school. And, like, <laughs> and one, day, uh, one day he'll be working for me. And, so, and his, his dad's a judge. Yeah. So it would be really weird because I guess maybe he's he would like, do the yeah. buys. He would, like, he is would, your like, dad really yeah. a judge? Yeah, he is. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. For, for, I was like, oh, for, you made that up. And I was like, that, no, that's no, too specific. Yeah. So for, he'd, he would do the buys. He'd like, yeah. he, instead of saying, like, we're going to buy these and pass on these, he's like, right. no, these are guilty and these are innocent. These are guilty and these are innocent. Guilty of being <laughs> worthless. <laughs> Damn, enough with the gavel. It's, it scares the customer. That'd be amazing, actually. Actually, I kind of want that. No, that's a good idea. Gavel. You're like, uh, <laughs> sorry, if gavel's been struck, decision's been made. <laughs> I passed on these. Oh, man. Appeal. <laughs> So yeah, or and the Supreme Court could be um, everyday music. <laughs> that's right. They can overturn it if they right. want to. Overturned. We're taking these. Yeah. Buy anything. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I just since back then I I had always thought that we we need a record store here, and I always wanted one. I wasn't sure if it was just me, but uh, after being in Seattle and working at a record store, technically uh, two, technically two, three, technically three record oh, stores. I uh, only worked at two. That's right, yeah. So, uh, when I moved back, I first, I was working, managing a skate shop, and then uh, the owner was an asshole, and so I was like... The owner was a (laughs) bummer. I needed to do something else, and I was saving up money because it's super cheap over there, and I was like, you know what, I'm just going to open a record store, I'm going to do it, and my girlfriend uh, that I've been with for a really long time was really supportive, and she was like, yeah, you really should... You should do it. And so I was just thinking about like everything we did uh, at Spin Cycle. And uh, 
like all the numbers we had gone through. I remember texting you and asking you yeah. like, what what do we used to do? You know, on, on Discogs and I I, th- I think that was actually when I re- like the first indication that you're opening up a record store because you texted me and you're like, how much money do we make on Discogs per month? And yeah, or something like that. Yeah, and I was like, I think Sam wants to open Sam up a was, store yeah. because there's so no re- I, was, I, don't, I don't think he was updating his diary. Like, <laughs> I missed some entries. Like, here. oh, I didn't ever n- notate how much we made online. <laughs> So, yeah, I was just collecting information and deciding, like, you know, is this a good idea? And then when I came down to, like, the number of, like, I got to make X amount of dollars a day online and in-store to be able to, like, make this functioning record store, I was finally like, you know what? This is, like, really doable. And talking to just a handful of people around the area, I'm like, I think, you know, I think there is a need for it and, and people want it here, so... Well, it's also originally you're also, you sold comics in the beginning. Of yeah. Too. Yeah, it was uh, graphic novels and... Yes. And records, so strictly graphic novels because like, I want to get into single issues. Like big, but were they like DC, Marvel, like mainstream type things? Or uh, my biggest and... section was like Image, yeah, and uh, like I, IDW, like independent stuff. But I did have like things that I thought were staples, like you know, certain Batman. Have you been reading and... Paper Girls at all? Anybody? You, ha- you don't have to whisper. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, our, hey. our listeners would prefer if you hey. didn't whisper. Yeah. Reading Paper Girls. Hey. Uh, I haven't got into Paper Girls, but I. I love everything by Brian K. Bond does. It. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Saga, like Saga. Yeah. yeah. So. Anyways, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> no, continue. You talk about it more. Oh, Paper Girls is a really awesome Brian K. Vaughn yeah. new. Um, I, I brought I bought the first trade because Image you is. You bought it? Yeah. You didn't get it from the library? No. Oh my god! I bought and, a comic. Yeah, that's that. Actually, that's really amazing. Breaking um, news. I... <laughs> every time I'd go over when we used to record these at Joseph's place, every time I'd go over, there'd be like a five foot stack you of should library, see... library, 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 library. I have comics. that right now yeah. of comics. Like <laughs> I'm I'm going through like as much image stuff as I can right now. But yeah. I did buy the first trade because image does this thing where the first trade only ten bucks. bucks. Yep. And so it's so that's why and that's because they that, like you, and that's yeah. another reason why my my image section was the biggest is because it's like, like that I can have <laughs> all these image comics that are only costing me like six bucks, yeah. five bucks, you know, yeah, and I can sell them for ten bucks, and people are going to buy them up, you know. Yeah. I've got and they're s- really good. Like <laughs> so into Paper Girls that I'm buying it as it comes out now. Issue oh, that issue, issue yeah. by issue, issue. Yeah. I was like that on Saga. I actually have a first print Saga oh, number fuck one. You. Yeah. Hey yo. <laughs> <laughs> Back, um, <laughs> back, back to your store. Yeah. So you don't sell comics anymore. So I didn't. So wait, wait. So we wouldn't. So how, you just like call up Image and said, "Hey, I have a new comic store." No. Uh, you actually have to contact Diamond, and then that's the whole <laughs> process. Um, so do you prepay for them, and can you return them? You can return. Um, it costs you money to return. Yeah. And they're really strict about the return policy. But Diamond, if you're getting. Image or Marvel or DC or any of like anything that pretty much anybody knows, like you have to go through Diamond. Uh, they're like a distributor. Yeah, they're monopoly. a distributor monopoly. Yeah, kind of, for, for kind those, of for those. Yeah. Do you, do so, you want to try to break them up? Should we start our own distribution? Start company? our own distribution right company here, and right try. <laughs> Folks, <laughs> listeners, would you fund us? Would you kickstart us? No, kickstart us. Kick, kickstart us. Friends, so family. Thanks, family. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Donate whatever you feel comfortable. Yeah, donate whatever you feel comfortable. <laughs> oh, wait. That, we haven't ran the ad yet. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So back to your story. Uh, so, yeah, I guess uh, I just, after, like, deciding that, you know, it was something that was wanted, I, and I decided that also, I figured there were a lot of people like me that didn't just like records. They also liked comics. And so, um, but single issues is, like, that's... That's a tough game, I feel like, because then you have to carry like a multiple amounts of every single thing that comes out because you don't know who wants yeah. what. And and that's a lot of it. You got subscription, yeah, yeah, you got subscription boxes. So I was like, I'm just gonna do graphic novels, um, and records. And so I opened it up. I opened up inside this, this uh, is is like this mini mall kind of thing, like almost like a strip mall. Uh, it's called Village Square. In downtown Napa, is across the street from this uh, venue and uh, coffee shop called That's Flying cool. M. That's a good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I was like, I, I wanted to be downtown because of that that place and somewhere close to it because they had that coffee shop has had like some really good artists there, like King Tough played there, Ruby Suns played there. So I was like, I know like this. That's like the perfect. Right. All the people who are already there would be like, oh, hey, exactly, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So. But it, it was across the street inside of this place called Village Square, so you have to actually walk in. And there's nothing but like antique shops and oh. junk shops, 
like in the place, but it was like the cheapest rent I could find at the time and the only available space. And so I was like, I'm just going to do it because I really wanted to get out of uh, the skate shop that I was working at. Wait, wait so, so who was the first person in that place that you talked to? That, like one of the other renters. One of the other renters. This like, lady that... <laughs> Sold dolls, sold like antique no. Dolls. There was a lady in there actually that uh, runs a <laughs> graphic design uh, business. Okay. Uh, that she uses with her free copy of Photoshop Light that she got Whoa. with something. Yeah. You know, we need some design words. You got her digits? Do you got? Any... <laughs> Does she have like a rotary phone? Uh... What's your credit score? <laughs> <laughs> My, my credit score. I want to know. I want to know how you got. Oh, it. We, we we got his credit score. Don't uh, oh yeah, it's yeah. Co- it's gonna come up later <laughs> after the break. I we'll can tell you that. that I didn't use any credit for this at all. Mm. Uh, savings and then uh, help from. So credit where credits not do. Right. <laughs> exactly. Um, so I I move into this space and it's it's really weird. Like everything is is super like. Uh, country western themed in there like the entire well, you are in idaho the entire <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah the entire structure and it's the trim of everything everything just looks like country western were all the other shop owners like afraid of you they hated like, like they like instantly the hated me like the this antique shop that was like just across the hallway first thing they were just like really rude to me they didn't want me to really? go in there they found out that i was going to be a record store and they, they came by and asked me, like, do you plan on playing music in here? I'm like, yeah, I'm going to play music. Yeah. And they're like, mm. Mm. and I tried to, because I knew that would happen. And so I was like, I'm going to put a, every space is has an open ceiling. Yeah. Because it's kind of like an open space. And so I was like, I'm going to build a ceiling in here. That way I don't have to deal with shit from anyone else. Yeah. Um, so I was starting to build a ceiling and I had like the two by fours lined up to like put a roof on it. And then... Uh, the lady from the from the design place kind of ratted me out. She had the fire department come and inspect Ooh. like her spot, and then sent them over to me. And it's like that guy's opening his place. You should go check it out. <sighs> and he's like, um, "What are you doing up there?" And I'm like, "I'm just gonna put a roof up." He's like, "What are you gonna do?" I'm like, "I'm just gonna put like sound foam yeah. up there and like yeah. like plywood." And he's like, "Oh, you actually have to use like an anti-flammable." And then, so I looked into that, and it was super expensive, so I'm like, I'm not going to do that. So I just left it open, and I was yeah. like, you know what? I contacted the own, like the owner of the building, yeah. and I'm like, listen, it's going to be really expensive for me to put a roof on here that's soundproof, so I'm just going to play my music. If you don't care, then I don't care if they complain. And she's like, I don't care. I was like, okay. Because hmm. she was trying to get, like, a and young... Yeah, and yeah, she, she wants to get, like, she wants to get, to like, a, a younger, future, yeah. you know, like like clientele coming into her building and otherwise so she's it's like, gonna die exactly yeah. so she was like yeah um can i ask you were there any people there there were uh people of color or uh, people of color yeah. were owning shops there uh then, owning or... shops no no that, that's um, what i mean where i need the other business oh no 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 oh no that's not that's not true okay. there's a vietnamese restaurant uh oh. right across from me so yeah so you, you were the there first, so you were the first Mexican to come in. The first open, Mexican, yeah. Open, open yeah, to come business. and open a, okay. open a business in there. Yeah. I'm sure they loved so. that you were Mexican, have tattoos, and were opening right, a record yeah, store. and yeah. opening a record and missing a tooth. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they were like this guy. I didn't think about that at all. This but I guy. Do, I feel like someone complaining, and then just one guy in the back, and he doesn't have and a he he missing a goddamn tooth. Yeah, what happened to that tooth? What yeah. are you doing? <laughs> what the, a piece <laughs> of shit. I like, I like, I like, I like the idea of the people in the antique shop like talking about you and like drinking tea from like. Like little like you know like saucers uh, and like like tiny cups and be such like terrible people. But like they talk and they talk and there's one guy who waits everyone's and talking. He's like, I want to know where that tooth went. <laughs> I <laughs> want to get to the bottom of that. I, I want to know. Yeah. I'll uh, put some people on it. it sh- they actually so those people who were really rude to me actually came like and gave me a backhanded kind of compliment or like a really. S- <laughs> it doesn't smell in here at she, all. Exactly. She, <laughs> she came in and she's like, you know what? When you first moved in, I was expecting you uh, to just be a problem, that. but uh, you've actually been okay. I, I, you know, you're you're a really good, really good member or like addition to this building. And I'm like, thanks, I guess. Get yeah. get get the fuck out you of my shop. You should have been like, oh, I still hate you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So you should have been like, wow, I was expecting that you were gonna be like really like a shitty person. And why? Well, hey, it looks <laughs> yeah. like I'm right, you're right. Wrong. Yeah. Uh, so, but it was interesting. I only stayed in that space for about six months. Actually, a uh, local band posse uh, stopped in. Hello. Visited. Local heartthrob heroes. <laughs> 
visited me. Uh, they were doing uh, performing at a local festival, and I Tree Fort. No. Oh. Uh, yeah, they played Tree Fort. Tree Fort. Yeah. Well, you said no. No, they did. Yeah. You okay. just said no. Did I, I say no? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I thought I said oh. Oh, oh maybe you did. Maybe you did. <laughs> okay. All right. This is a hit podcast. <laughs> oh. So, uh, yeah, they were doing Tree Fort and so- I think you told Sasha and, mm-hmm. and Paul to get a hold of me. So yeah. Sasha emailed me and I was like, you guys should totally come check out the shop. So I went and saw their uh, in-store at a different record store in Boise. Uh, record uh, Exchange. Record Exchange. Yeah. And then afterwards they were like, okay, we're heading out. And I'm like, well, my shop's in the way if you guys want to check it out. So they came by. Uh, so one, one funny thing about Posse, uh, so when I went to visit you, uh, I was just by coincidence, uh, when I was in Idaho, I had a Posse shirt on. Yeah. And the first place, I, not the first, but like I went to a bookstore and uh, like the woman, uh, one of the people working there, like she was walking, she was just like going, leaving the counter and she stopped and she saw me and she was like, where did you get that shirt? And I was like, oh, uh, yeah. I'm, I'm a, I was, or maybe she'd say, where did you get that shirt? I think maybe she just said, she's like... Oh my God! You have a posse shirt. I love posse. She's like, did you see them at Tree Fort? And I'm like, oh, actually, I'm 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 from Seattle. And she's like, oh God, I love them. I have their record on vinyl. <laughs> I uh, don't just have their album, but I have it on vinyl. Yeah. Uh, and I thought that was really cool. Uh, and then um, I actually went to the record exchange, and the people behind the counter were like, it's a really nice shirt. You know, posse played here. I, but it was nice. I mean, I guess there's like you know. I mean, there's like, Idaho like loves Posse. Well, yeah. they were great. They like they bought Idaho shirts like when they performed and they like put them on. They're uh, like we love Andrew, boys. Yeah. They're like we love Boise or we heard it's Boise. Like they were like Boise boy like. They, yeah, they love them. Boy-like. And you know the way they are. Like when they do in stores, they do they like, grab records and suggest stuff. Yeah. They're they're great. So uh, they wouldn't do an in store for me, but you know whatever. Um, <laughs> well, so, well, 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 real quick. <laughs> I think Joseph's having I, I a really stroke. Really good show, Moon. Uh, um, what's up? <laughs> Sorry. Uh, so, who the fuck is that actor, Jimmy? Who Jimmy played? Stewart? Jimmy Stewart. Oh yeah. I kept Did wondering... you say Jimmy Hoopla? No. I was, <laughs> I was gonna. Who was the president, Jimmy? Uh, oh, Jeb Jim... Bartlett's the president. No, Jimmy Jeb Bartlett. Yeah, yeah, Jim... yeah. Well, well, Bartlett. Jimmy Carter. Um, Jimmy Carter, there you go. So you moved, you in, you only stayed there six months, and then you moved? I stayed in that space for six months, and then I moved. A space opened up across the street, which was uh, just three doors down from oh, oh, that love the band. <laughs> love, the, love the band. Love the location. Uh, yeah. <laughs> right, it was three doors down from, that, from uh, the Flying M, uh, that coffee shop. So I was like, this is perfect. Everyone walks on that side of the street that walks because that's like the most popular. Place. The other side of the street, there's a homeless man. It, it was man seriously that it's like, like no, shit. Yeah. no, nobody goes on the other side of the street at all yeah. unless they're. Getting... And it's, it's in the town charter that we can't kick them out <laughs> <laughs> unless they're going to the Vietnamese place. Yeah. So all the foot traffic is on the other side. So I was like, as soon as the space opened up, I was like, I'm gonna go there. Who was there beforehand? Uh, <laughs> Bait and tackle. A. Uh, he did taxes and uh, oh. helped with uh, citizenship papers. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm sorry so. to see him go out of business. Can't make a joke about that. I don't know. Yeah, that seems like a nice yeah. guy. Hey, that's yeah. a really... Yeah. 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 I, was, I was working on a joke in my head. I was like, no, that, no that's no, a good no, guy. Yeah. Yeah. That's funny. If you're that guy, please email us at uh, accessonpurposepodcast.gmail.com. You're doing the Lord's work. Uh, we actually have a lot actually, of trouble it, with our taxes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're really fucked. <laughs> we're really, it's we're, just Gary trying to do them, and he can't even really do addition very well. Is so. that what Gary's doing back there yeah. in the calculator? Yep. Uh, <laughs> He's smoking cigarettes. <laughs> ka-ching, ka-ching. Chain smoking yeah. with the hat, the, the visor. The visor, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, so I moved to that space because I wanted to do, I knew, I was like, I want to do in stores eventually. Uh, and I couldn't do them in there. They didn't even want me to turn my music up too loud. And I was, I tried to be like, one time when I was in the other space. So this salon moved in behind me, like a hair a hair cutting salon. And they actually had like oh, somebody. Salon dot com. Yeah, they, they, famous website. They had somebody like did nails in there too, but. Uh, oh well, now that's a different story. One one time, <laughs> a girl came over, and I was playing Susie and the Banshees, hmm. and she comes over and she's like, "Hi, I have this." older woman that I'm doing her hair right now and she's just really sensitive to like the music that you're playing can you change it and I'm like I'm not even playing like like you know sometimes I'll play like yeah like like grave diggers you know like I'm like I don't care like what I'm playing I'm playing what I have and what I'm gonna sell and I'm like really like this is 
So I, I changed it, but I was like, God, I gotta get the fuck out of here. I wish you could put on <laughs> opera. Like, so I, I don't know. I, uh, well, it'd be funny if you were like, okay, I'm gonna, and you put on an opera, and then she comes back over, and she's like, actually, this woman knows Italian, and this is a really she's sad really opera. Sad <laughs> opera, opera, really sad yeah. opera, and like she's crying right now. Yeah, so can she's you like put, this. Oh, jeez. <sighs> Yeah, so I, I put on like tops or something. I was like, I put on like some really like mellow like indie rock. So I put on yeah, but and and then other times, well, another time they came over and they're like, we like it when you play this kind of music. And I'm like, I don't give a fuck what you like. You know, I'm gonna play yeah. what I'm gonna play. So although I should have been like, well, what do you like? I'll order it in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, you're gonna buy some. Records? <laughs> do you have a record player? Yeah. Uh, so I mo- I moved across the street so I could do in stores, and then. Uh, Ended up uh, having a friend of mine that wanted to start a uh, skate shop move in with me, so it kind of combined skate oh, so shop. Oh, so your neighbors there? You had it was a tattoo shop. And... There's a tattoo shop next door, and then a candy shop, uh, and then a uh, it's like a float center. You know, like like this, like the oh, sensory deprivation yeah, yeah. Oh, tanks. Oh, yeah, yeah. So the float center was that. directly. Oh, that was, I had no idea like that was going to be a thing, but. Yeah. <laughs> So he was constantly coming by and being like, "Can you turn it down a little bit?" Like, Wait, so he has like cheap tanks then? Because they should just yeah, go, yeah. So I I don't understand. I, I, You're totally right. He it's was really not nice. Like they just put you in a wood too. No, yeah. his his were like like and like the older like shitty ones. Yeah, I don't even know. But like he would come over and he'd he be like, whittled you, them out of bamboo. He'd be like, "Can you turn it down a little bit?" Because you know you can kind of hear the music come through and. Can you turn your lights he was so, off? He was so nice, so nice of a guy, though, that I was always like, all right. Here? But I, at, at certain times, I was like, you know what? Like, it's not my job. Like, if I like if I was running a recording studio, it'd be my job to keep the other sound out. Yeah. So it's not my job to have the music turn down low. It's, sim- it's your business. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I really wish, uh, like, a bus or, uh, like, a police car would have gone by right there. <laughs> that <laughs> right would have been, been perfect timing. Yeah. If I was running an actual recording studio, <laughs> so and then at the end there's a vape shop and then the coffee shop. So like yeah, a few doors down. So it's tattoo shop, uh, candy shop, vape shop, and a float shop. Basically, <laughs> so basically middle America. Surrounding. Right? I mean, yeah, I mean, sur- it sounds like a my America. <laughs> surrounding me, but uh, yeah, it's it's great because once I moved in there, then I did my first in store with a uh, killer ghost. Did Did you do better business when you moved over there? Did you I did it the first. Business Bureau. I did. I did <laughs> hey not, guys, I'm doing good. I, I did <laughs> yeah, not. Hey, like, my business is better. Yeah. I, I did it first, and then it kind of went back to what it was doing before. Wait, wait. So, so when you approached Killer Ghost, how did it go? Uh, <laughs> why is that funny? I don't know. Just like, how did it go? Like, what'd you say first? What I mean is, like, why did you pick them? Like, there's actually a, a did local. Did you tell them is your first in store? No. Lie so to a them? local you lied to them. I did. You're lying to all I, of our listeners. I didn't lie to them. Uh, a local promoter named Robbie, who's a really nice guy. Um, we'll, we'll see. We'll, we'll, we'll check into that. <laughs> he, uh, fact check it. Trust me, it's true. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he uh, he came to me and was like, "Listen, I have this band from Seattle, Killer Ghost, that's Wait, coming through." Is his first through. name Margo? Uh, his Robbie. <laughs> I just Mother I just Robbie. said Robbie. Yeah, I, I get it. We'll talk about suicide in a little bit. So, oh, we're gonna fucking. Talk are we gonna about talk that. about yeah. that? Okay. It was a terrible movie. Yeah, we're gonna get. Yeah. That. Okay. Did you guys see it? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. it's fucking we'll terrible. It. Yeah. Uh, After the break, stay tuned. <laughs> so he uh, is like, I have this band from Seattle that I uh, think would be perfect for your shop. I don't have a place. I don't have a place to play him or like who to pair him with because he mostly did like punk shows. Mm-hmm. So he's like, I don't really have a like a band to pair him with in a show that I already have, and I don't know of any other places. Um, I know you said you wanted to do in stores, so he sent me their stuff. I wasn't familiar with him, and I listened to him, and I was like, "Yeah, that sounds great, perfect for my first in store." So, um, we set that up. They actually uh, van their van broke down on the way to the in store. So I have I'm marketing this like crazy. I'm like, let's you know, yeah. my first in store, the mayor, free show, the mayor's cutting a ribbon, free, <laughs> free show. Of Seattle band, you know, and that was the other thing I wanted to do too about my in stores was I wanted them to be, if they were if they were local, I wanted them to be because it's not like Seattle where there's so much. I'm not saying anything negative about the music in Idaho. It's just the population is smaller, so like this, you're not going to have as much good like local talent. So 
unlike here where it's like there's non-stop good local like local bands playing all the time and if you uh, want to hear uh, any of those bands being interviewed just look at our back catalog <laughs> uh you it, it just doesn't come through very often and so i figured this would be awesome to have like bands from out of town come they would normally never hear of or they wouldn't have heard before come play and get exposure and they would hear something new that you know maybe they'd never heard before yeah. so and it's uh, free when I heard them, I was like, this is perfect. I let them know, like, listen, I'm never going to charge for in-stores so that, you know, I, I, I'm not going to charge it a fee. They'll just have to sell merch. He was like, yeah, they're, they're cool with it. So they come uh, in, like, 45 minutes before the, the show's sp- supposed to start. They text me, like, hey, sorry, we just got, like, into service. Our van had broke down, and we're, like, in Pendleton right now. Is that which is like, like, three hours away. Whoa. And I was like, oh my gosh. And it was like, <laughs> getting close to the showtime. So they're like, eh, is there anyone we can push the showtime back? I'm like, well, ha. <sighs> I'm like, I could probably like keep people occupied until like nine. And it was supposed to be at seven. I'm like, but that's, I mean, if you get here later and they're like, okay, well, we'll let you know. Like, we're going to try to fly through there as quick as possible. The person didn't tell me they're in Pendleton. They're like, we're a couple hours out. I'm like, okay, well, you know, we can try, I can try to push it till nine, but anything like past that's going to be tough. So. Then they let me know, like, a little bit later. They're like, hey, sorry. Like, yeah, we're not going to get into, like, 10 or 11. I'm like, yeah. Like, it is completely dead down here at that point. You've run out of magic tricks. Yeah. I'm like, I don't don't know what to do. uh, So I have to post. I have to post, like, last minute change. I'm like, they're like, we still want to play. So I'm like, okay, last minute change. It's going to be tomorrow afternoon. Mm. And it's like a Thursday. (laughs) So... They oh, up, really? They played Thursday during the day? Yes, yeah, so they ended up playing like a Thursday afternoon and... Uh, Did anyone come? Well, so... Some people kind of hijacked my show, the show that I was going to do. Oh, are we going to talk about my favorite bar? Uh, yes. Awesome. So... <laughs> favorite year, favorite bar. Favorite year, <laughs> favorite bar. 1918. So... These people, I, I made like a Facebook event page, you know, and I didn't put it like restricted to. You're such a millennial. <laughs> I didn't restrict it to like. Uh, I don't even really know how to use Facebook. Like you can do like a restriction to where only certain people can post yeah. on that. I yeah. didn't do that because I don't really know how it works in the first place. Uh, uh, yeah. And so when I decided, like, I didn't know some other people that like had found out, like when I had been posting about Killer Ghost, they looked them up. And they started, like, I guess, like, emailing the band or something and getting into it. Well, when they found out that I wasn't going to have the show until the next day, they were like, hey, guys, we talked to the band. Show's been relocated. They post on my Facebook event page. Show's been relocated to 1918, which is this bar. Can can (laughs) I describe the bar? Yeah, you can. You, why don't you do it? Yeah, no, yeah. Okay, so now 1918... Uh, is probably the one of the best bars I ever went to in my life. So, no, are, are you being serious? No, or? no, yes, yes. <laughs> oh, because yes, of the experience, not yes, because it's actually no. Cool. It's so one thing. So, is is Nampa completely non-smoking? Except, Nampa is completely non-smoking if it's anywhere that serves food. Okay, so yeah. this bar does not serve food. So, when you walk into the bar, it's like not only are people smoking, but even if no one's smoking. Just everything smells like smoke. Like the the, the soap. Like my in the, uncle's house. Yes, it's. You know what? Thank you. It smells like an uncle's house. The soap in the bathroom smells like cigarettes. Yeah. <laughs> um. It's it's really dark. It's a very like Bukowski type of bar. And my favorite part was I went to go play songs on the jukebox, and the jukebox can play music, but to flip through the CDs is broken. But they just have a binder with a list and like just like the worst font of like the songs that could be played. So you just like flip through a binder. There's no, like no pictures of the album art or anything <laughs> like that. It's just a list of the song titles and what buttons you'd have to push. What'd you play? Uh, well, um, let's see. I know I played Green Onions. You did play Green Onions. Uh, I played Santana. Um, <laughs> smooth? Smooth, yeah. Yeah. Smooth? Yeah. 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 yeah, he had to play Smooth. Yeah. So smooth. Yeah. Oh, my Spanish hot little moment. Uh, Lost episode. Yes. Uh, <laughs> uh, and so, yeah, it is just... Oh, the other thing is the TV. 
Poo's TV. Oh, yeah. Room. So the TV's <laughs> behind the bar are, they're like, they're like, LED TVs, but like the first ones they invented. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So like the actual like rectangle of the TV is huge, and the TV the screen, screen is oh, like really yeah, inches. Yeah, yeah, you know what yeah, I'm yeah. talking yeah. about? Like that. Totally and so they had like two of those behind the bar, and it's like you can't even really see what's going on. <laughs> and there's no way that they were on the forefront of LED TVs. No. So they, they found them like in the garbage. Will. No, they found them in the garbage. Yeah, they, they found them in the garbage. Yeah. And they it was a free pile could, that somebody yeah, had outside. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so yeah, that was, and what was funny was, um, there, uh, so I was hanging out with Sam, and then someone else who I know who lives in Idaho, if you're listening, Kelly, hello, uh, Kelly texted me and was like, oh, you should make, uh, Sam take you to 1918, you can smoke inside. And so I brought this up to Sam, Sam's like, I fucking hate that bar, fuck that bar. <laughs> and so immediately I'm like, well, we're going to this bar, there's no way we are not going to a bar that Sam I, I did not, I already, like... It was just a bar. I didn't hate it yet until this happened. So the show gets hijacked. They're like, the show's been relocated. They post on my, on my Facebook page. The show's been relocated in 1918 at 11 o'clock. So I didn't fucking go because I hate that bar in the first place. And I was just irritated. I'm like, I hope nobody shows up to this. You know, I hope nobody, because, and then I, I contacted the person that did it. I'm like, listen, like we hashed it out afterwards, but I was like, you realize that like, I it out afterwards? <laughs> Hashtag 1918 sucks. <laughs> Hashtag 1918 is awesome. Yeah. <laughs> so, Hashtag tag, it's okay, we can agree. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, I told him, like, you, you know, like, I'm a, I'm a small business, and, like, doing a free show is something that I'm doing to try to bring people in, and you taking that away from me uh, doesn't help at all. So when they actually did play, like, four people that went to the... To the performance at 1918 the night before came but I guess like they had like I probably had like eight people there yeah it was it was a bad turnout for them and I apologized to them they were like we're just excited we had to play here you know and they're yeah. really great and they they, and, and they, were, they like, were awesome and like do you they have a washing really machine because well. all are close to my like smoke <laughs> right now <laughs> yeah we had to sleep in 1918 I I do fucking hate that though and Danny and I have talked about this maybe on the podcast but when like you have a, a post for something on Facebook and someone comments and says, "Oh, I can't make it. I'm I can't make it to your show yeah, at the Black yeah, Lodge. Yeah, yeah. I'm actually playing at the Crocodile that night with this band, this band, and this one." They, yeah, you know, it's like, just rude. Yeah, yeah it's, it's just like, like if you can't make it, you can't make it. Like, yeah, don't to, like, say yeah. Yeah. So, and then they took it upon themselves, yeah, to to take the show. So that was the first in story I had. Um, Second in store. Speaking of in store, I what the fuck is your store called? Have we brought that up yet? It, collective. Collective. Yeah. Collective it, what, records. Collective vinyl records and tapes. Yeah. Collective vinyl record. You have, you sell vinyl records. Sell so vinyl. Yeah. Vinyl record. Well, because. Oh, you, I thought it was only shellac records. Yeah. <laughs> you, you, would, you wouldn't believe how many people. I do have a like, record that I do have a, a seven inch that's pressed into the cardboard that in the this came in. Oh, really? I, I got that record that you left me. We'll talk about that later. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so that was my first in-store. Then my second in-store was Ubu Roy. Which oh, wait, okay, hold on. Seattle's very own Ubu Roy? Yeah, yeah, once again, so, you know, someone once told me that I interrupt the guests too much, but <laughs> guess what? Who told you that? Was it him? No. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, Ubu Roy was going to go on tour. Uh, we've had every member of Ubu Roy on the podcast in one way or another, except for Colin, because Colin hates us. Yeah. Apparently, because <laughs> he threw a rock at me while I was riding my bike past him the other day, and I fell off and I hit my head. Uh, once, yeah. uh, he, while he was working at Pagliacci's, I went and I ordered uh, a salad, a slice of pizza, and some breadsticks. But when I went to pick up my order, it was just a big pile of poop. <laughs> and there was a little tiny like flag on a toothpick, and it said "From Colin," <laughs> and I couldn't get my money back. So it's really weird. But anyway, so yeah, they, they said, like, oh, we're going on tour, um, we need a show in Idaho. And I'm like, oh, well, sucking Sam, uh, he's like, I was, I was like, I was like, they're good, it's going to be free, but it's a show, and they seemed really excited. Sam, take it from there. <laughs> so, Danny tells me there's this, this band named Uberoy, uh, from Seattle, that I think is really great, and I think, you know, it'd be a really good in-store for you. And I was like, sounds great, and I trust Danny's taste. Ugh. I don't know. <laughs> one, of eight, one of eight people. <laughs> uh, so, uh, they... I, same kind of thing where I... I mar- 
This is, yeah, I had a bad run of in-stores. Actually. <laughs> <laughs> I Same. should stop doing it. Same kind of, actually, no, they were my third in-store. Now that I think about it, uh, Coma Surfs from Portland were my second in-store. I don't know them. So uh, that went on? smooth. Uh, they as Santa, Santana smooth? Uh, not quite. Okay, not quite. No Rob Thomas. No Rob Thomas smooth. smooth. Okay. Yeah. Speaking of Australia, <laughs> was he Australian? No, he got uh, in trouble. He got. Oh he, he, yeah. Yeah, he doesn't like Australians apparently. Oh, that's fine. Uh, so, Comasverse went really smooth. That was, and they, they were a good show. Uh, but Uberoy, it's it's about an hour before the show starting, and usually I'm kind of expecting people to be showing up you know around then or at least like a half an hour and it's getting close no like the con- crowd or the band the band yeah oh, no okay. contact at all yeah the the crowd's already starting to show up like people are like is the free show here yeah. it's so funny because my store is like the most you'll ever see in there was like three people at once <laughs> like on record store day like uh, five so, people so, okay <laughs> so, so uh so one person uh needs change for the parking meter the yeah. other person needs to go to the bathroom yeah uh, and, and i'm like i don't have a bathroom yeah <laughs> so people are starting to file in you know like it's a free show here i'm like yeah uh come on in browse and they they usually start showing about an hour early the band will usually come in about an hour early and start setting up and then you'll go next door because uh that coffee shop also has beer and so they can go next door and get a beer use the restroom whatever um so it's like an hour before haven't heard from them at all and so i'm like oh you know like hopefully hopefully they're getting here okay and then 30 minutes until i'm like okay i'm really nervous i text danny and i'm like danny (laughs) you were my contact (laughs) through this i haven't heard anything from them are they coming and he's like let me let me see what i can find out uh and then finally they they get a hold of me and they're like hey uh our bad we thought uh we didn't realize there was a, a time difference (laughs) <laughs> we didn't realize because i'm idaho's mountain time yeah. like, we didn't realize there was an hour time difference uh which which i drove to idaho there is our like a giant billboard right like, are there really yeah it's you said you it are says not, you yeah, are not entering mountain, mountain time, time yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's huge so they're like so we they were, must have been like so by here. that time i'm like panicking it's like 15 minutes to the show i get a hold of a local band that i know that's really like cool band um they do like I don't know what you would call it, like. You front, don't know what I would call anything. Front, <laughs> front porch blues, uh, blues rock. I don't know. It's like uh, a I like back porch. It's like rock. a two. It's like a two piece. Uh, their name Reverend pieces. Otis. They're they're really <laughs> awesome. Uh, uh, I I, and they're friends of mine. So I got a hold of them and I'm like, can you guys can you guys play? Like now. So they're. I knew they were practicing that night. They're like, we're practicing. They're yeah. like, we're gonna try to come to your show. We're gonna we're gonna practice. Then we'll come to the show. I'm like, yeah. hey. Can you guys come yeah. and play? Your practice I need here, something. But... I have people here. Yeah. Uh, so like last they, minute... they saw all my magic tricks at the Killer Ghost show. <laughs> yeah, so they're not gonna be entertained by those. So I'm like, please. So like they're like, yeah. And he lived like, like a mile away. So he's like, yeah, we'll load up. We'll head right over there. I was like, awesome. So I try on, on Facebook again. I'm like, show's been changed to Reverend Otis. Still really awesome show. Come see the show. Anybody that's coming. Uh, then Uberoy like he's texting me. Like at then at seven when the show was supposed to be at, and he's like, "Hey, you know, we're like thirty minutes out. Is it cool if we still play there?" I'm like, "Yeah, I have another band playing. You guys just play afterwards." So they finally do show up, and I'm glad they did because it was fucking awesome. Yeah, they were so good. Yeah, they're great. It, it oh, was. Great. It was. <laughs> Yeah, sad. I know. I found out they broke up. It was really sad. And their lives have all really gone downhill pretty hard since then. Well, they're just sending. They're throwing rocks at you. They're giving Danny poop plates. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, well, Sam is in the middle of nowhere. Um, That's true, actually. As a part, not this Sam. This basis. Oh yeah, the basis Uber Sam. Yeah. Oh, the basis. He, Sam. He's like doing. He's the one that I was talking he's to. Like he's like, I have Sam too. Yeah. yeah. Moved to he, Portland, right? No. I, remember, I read something that was saying like two of the band members were moving. He changed his mind and he moved in the middle of the woods. Okay. Uh, he joined like a weird thing to try to overthrow the government. A cult? Yeah, <laughs> something like that. He was one of those guys who took over that national park in Oregon. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay. And he's the one that stayed and they can't find <laughs> yeah. him. <laughs> like everyone's, one, one, he's everyone's one, looking for. Him. Area <laughs> protesters still missing. <laughs> if, if you know where he is, email us at access on purpose, uh, podcast at gmail.com. Dot com. <laughs> um, so Uber and then at the end they're like who do we see about getting paid <laughs> are you serious no, no, no they actually no, no. they sold quite a bit like they sold t-shirts uh, 
They, I mean, they, sold... they, they, they told me it was like one of the better nights. Yeah, they were. Like, I, I know they sold. They sold. So they had some. So seven... there was a good crowd. There. They had some seven inches. It was a good crowd. Yeah. yeah, yeah, a good crowd showed up. And at first, they're kind of disappointed. They're like, oh, even though it's a local show, they're like, oh, these guys, these guys are already play here. Yeah. And then the Uber ride showed up, and people were like, oh, okay, funneled in. It was the second best attendance show that I had. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Um, do you have employees? No. Ah, uh, yes. You? Sorry. Sorry, Gabby. Yes. Ooh. <laughs> Wait, Gabby from Stickers? Uh, no. Oh, <laughs> Not Gabby from, from Stickers. Uh, I had a really super extremely part-time employee. That oh, was like cool. my emergency employee that I fired like multiple times because I was like, can you work this day? And she's like, I can't. I'm working my other job. I'm like, well, why are you even working here then? Yeah. <laughs> so I do, I did so have... there like every day. Are I did closed? have one employee. Uh-huh. I'm closed. I'm closed. Completely. Are you serious? Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's done? Yeah, I, I had to close, yeah. Why? Uh, just... Oh, I didn't... Now I feel bad. No, it's fine. Uh, it got to a point where it was like... So we've been open for like two and a half years. And yeah. it got to a point of like... The summer was always my slowest time. And so I'm like, do I want to like grind through another summer and then have to like spend the fall and the winter like worst of my good months rebuilding the stock back up? Yeah. And I'm like... I just don't. I just don't think Idaho is ready for it yet. So yeah. I just decided to close. I'm like, maybe I'll try it again in three years or something like that. But yeah, yeah, yeah. That's cool. Yeah. At least you showed your dad. <laughs> I, t- I told you, Dad. Yeah. I told you I'd be something. Yeah. <laughs> Man. Okay. So I we shouldn't tell people to look should to look it up when they no. go there. Should we tell them to look you up? No, you look it up anyways. Yeah. Did basically... you have like a one last blowout? I didn't. I didn't. No. Hmm. I didn't have one last blowout. I, what about sale? Would you have like a store closing sale? I did have a store closing sale, yeah. And then I, what were your markdowns? It's funny. I did like the best like that I had done. The best day ever uh, that I'd ever done. Like the day after I announced. Like I'm closing. Everything's going to be 30% off. You know? Oh, so like... Because you, I can you sell things on online, you know? And then some people just started showing up and buying all sorts of stuff. I'm like, hey, maybe I'll stay open. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so. So now Mom, beside... What? Oh. What is it? I was just gonna say, sad to hear you close, but I'm glad you did it. So, uh, did you guys, do you guys like Ken Burns documentaries? Yeah. Yes. Uh, I do too. And I was watching uh, the one he did on Prohibition. Oh yeah, the one that makes you want to drink. It could, yeah, because they show like yeah, like dropping Wh- ice I just want and whiskey. whiskey. Yeah, yeah, you want fucking like whiskey on the rocks <laughs> the entire but, time you're watching it. But uh, what's interesting is that in that documentary, uh, I found out that. People used to like walk around with alcohol to and sell it on the street. And what they would do was they would hide um, a bottle in their boot. And that's where the phrase bootlegger came from. Oh. Sam, do you know anything <laughs> about bootlegging? Uh, Jesus I, Christ. So now. Your, your segues are <laughs> getting better and better and more complicated. <laughs> I may or may not. I also run a bootleg tape label. If you're Frank Ocean, uh, he doesn't. I don't. If you're Frank Ocean or Earl Sweatshirt or Kendrick, or Lamar. Kendrick Lamar or Ghostface Ghost or Alexander Spit or Aesop Rock, or <laughs> I do not run a bootleg uh, tape company. But if okay, so if you if let's say hypothetically you were going to start a bootleg tape company, what would you do? What would you do? Yeah. Uh, so it kind of derived from the fact that I owned my own record store. I was like, because you know, like working at Spin Cycle, um, it's, you really don't like to play things that you can't sell in the store. It, no, it's, so like, oh uh, yeah, sorry to interrupt. Uh, but like one, like some Whoever t- told you that, you've really taken it so hard. <laughs> yeah. It was hard on you. So like sometimes, like, especially like, there's a lot of times where I'll like work on 11 hour shift. Yeah. And I will bragging. just, I'll just, how is that bragging? <laughs> Humble oh, brag. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. If there's one person that's rolling the fucking dough, it's Danny Dog. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but, uh, Daniel James Dog. Yeah. But so I'll just like, bring a bunch of records from home because I'm like, okay, I'm going to be there for 11 hours. Yeah. I was like, and I haven't listened to this stuff in a while. And then, yeah, like someone really wants to buy something you're playing it's like i'm sorry i'm I, sorry i don't I, yeah I, I bought this record 15 years ago and it means more to me than you can understand right yeah and i'm not gonna sell it to you so go fuck off yeah so me not wanting to play stuff that i couldn't i couldn't sell in the store wait, wait, wait. or i'm playing something like really weird off of youtube and i'm like yeah this doesn't exist. this doesn't exist exactly which leads us into what you 
So not not only is it something that I couldn't sell in the store, but like it was things that weren't available. So I kind of got this idea when I was like, it, it, it actually started because I really like the album uh, Albert Einstein that Alchemist and Prodigy made together. Uh, Prodigy from Mob Deep. Uh, and the producer Alchemist. Not Prodigy, the um, not Prodigy, the, oh, the, I, the techno. Yeah, I was thinking. You were like, like cool. yeah, yeah. I was like, cool, dude. The cool. one with the like, <laughs> Scorpion. Yeah, yeah cool, like the yeah. Matrix, whatever. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Uh, we should point out that Sam right now is dressed up like Morpheus. <laughs> like he Morpheus. has, he has <laughs> all black. He has those sunglasses yeah. on that just sit on the bridge of your nose. But... And the and leather he jacket. Out, yeah, he keep pulling out a cell phone that like the bottom yeah. part, like and asking for an exit and handing out pills. And handing out pills. Yeah, I gave you guys both. Pills. I don't know which one you took. Give me an exit. <laughs> so, uh, I really wanted to listen to that. I love that album. And I was like, I really wanted to listen to it. And I'm like, you know, and that's where the idea came from. I'm like, you know, I kind of want to just make these out, al- like put out these albums because it, it had never been released on record. Yep. It was never released uh, on cassette tape. Yep. It was only, I think it was put out on CD, uh, definitely you know on spotify and stuff like that like you can get it so uh digital music wise and i was like well there's no analog way to get it in the first place so like i'm really doing the lord's work here (laughs) (laughs) you know so what's really weird is like the window just got filled with sunlight like (laughs) sam is right now bathed (laughs) in sunlight so i decided i was like you know what i'm i'm gonna i'm gonna make cassette tapes of this this album that I can sell in the store, and in order to make myself feel better of it, because yeah. I do also graphic design and illustration, I'm like I'm gonna make original artwork yeah. for this tape. So I make I make, and then as soon as I did the one, I was like, okay, what else yeah. do I love that yeah. has never had an analog release that I can do this to? So Kendrick Lamar's uh, Section Eighty, uh, Frank Ocean. Uh, and it's official releases. So yeah. I saw Kendrick Frank- Lamar in Las Vegas. It was a good show. Did you? Yeah, I bet it was. Uh, so Frank Ocean's Channel I bet Orange. You didn't. I. That, that's a Las big, Vegas. Big yeah, show I got. Somewhere. I was like, who? No, I get it. <laughs> what are the odds? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's what I should have said. You saw him there. What are the odds? Hey, oh, three okay. to one. So, so yeah, I just decided on the and I've done original artwork for all the releases uh, that I've done, and um, I don't know. They yeah. well, so okay. They've so, gotten pretty yeah. pretty popular. Yes. <laughs> well, so you you sent uh, Spin Cycle a box, and like I was there, like not when they came in because it, it was a Saturday. They came on a Saturday, and Jason's like, "Oh, they arrived." I'm like, "Oh, cool." And he's like, "Put them in, the, put them in inventory and sell them." I'm gonna go, go kayaking and drink. <laughs> fucking employee. No, I'm joking. Jason's a great, great boss. But um, Jesus Christ! I was joking. I know, but that's that, <laughs> that whole tirade. Uh, but no, yeah. So, uh, like, I it's like the moment I put them on the tape shelf, people are walking back with them, and they're like, "What is this? Where did you get this? Like, it's only seven dollars." Like, you know, they were like, yeah. "So many," and yeah, they like fly off the fucking. Yeah, shelf. I sent oh. I sent Jason. He was asking me how the shop was going and everything, and. Uh, I don't know, we were talking, and so I sent him a picture of, like, a handful of the tapes that I had just you there. You sent him a dick pic. I saw it. <laughs> <laughs> you like this tape? <laughs> <laughs> that would be so weird. You want to order this tape? No. <laughs> uh, uh, so he was like, those look amazing. Like, I want... I want... <laughs> <laughs> not my... Not, not my genitalia. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the oh, tapes. Also those. The yeah. tapes. He was like, those look amazing. Uh, like how much do you want for those and send me five of each and i was like i don't know like it cost me this much to make them and he was like okay uh (laughs) yeah yeah i'll take five of each of each of your releases and then like as soon as i sent him uh like a month later he's like i need to restock and everything and then again it's like and no they they fly this last time it's yeah it's like i need like 15 copies of frank ocean like channel orange yeah it's like so uh it's been doing really 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 well I know it's funny. The day Frank Ocean announced he's putting out his second record, we sold like four really? in one day. Yeah, no, because I was like, it's supposed to be on people's minds. Yeah, I, I've never really listened to him, but my Facebook is like blowing up with how much people are listening to him. I've heard so he released. He just released like back to back albums. Like he released an album on like Friday. When they filmed the two Matrix sequels at the oh, same okay. time. 
Wait, 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 wait. Why are we talking about Frank Ocean? We could, we, we could be talking about Suicide Squad. All right, yeah, that's a good point. That movie was okay. fucking horrible. Okay. This is going to be a long episode. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, wait, wait. Before we talk about Suicide Squad, we need to pay some bills. Okay, let's pay some bills. Let's pay some bills. Yeah. Let's. Uh, and then later we'll go in for the kills. Okay. Ooh, well, I like that. Thank that you. Was good. Welcome to the dysfunctional holiday Kickstarter campaign. In the next few months, the band will be traveling to Cleveland, Ohio to work with an amazing national producer. The intent is to give you, the fans, some brand new high-level recordings. Trying to progress from an unsigned artist to a national act can be hard, but with the right team and the right steps, the band can start to accomplish the goals they have set for their career. At the end of the day, no artist would be where they are without the help of their amazing friends, fans, and families who support their dreams and aspirations. The band is asking that you please donate whatever you feel comfortable to this campaign to help fund the trip and this recording project. The guys have even offered to throw in some amazing fun rewards for the kindness. Thanks in advance for all the continued support for this project. And don't forget to donate, spread the word, and share this video on all of your social media sites. I'm definitely going to donate to that. <laughs> Friends, family. Though. So what are we? Some kind of suicide squad. God. Oh my god. Oh, what, what are we? <laughs> <laughs> that, I mean, that sounds it up right so there. I wish, you know, I wish Mike Pelly was here because I feel he'll defend DC movies. Um, what? I Who def- I will defend DC movies. Like, n- n- listen, listen. I didn't Just like the Batmans, Suicide Squad. Right? Well, it, Just the Nolan Batman. The Nolan Batman. That's all you can defend. Listen, listen, though. Okay, listen. And I liked Man of Steel. Uh, shut up. Uh, no, 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 no. I think we've, we talk, I think we've already about spent this. a half an hour in the past talking about Man yeah. of Steel, okay. so I don't want to yeah. get into that. Okay. But I just want it to be good so bad that I'm willing to even like. I even kind of like the Ultimate Edition of BVS. Kind of okay. It's a terrible movie, but it's just it's better the Ultimate okay. Edition. Suicide Squad was so bad. Okay, let, let me just say this. Okay, so like you know, months ago when I knew that oh that, yeah, yeah Batman versus Superman was coming out and Suicide was coming out. I thought Batman vs. Superman was going to be horrible, and Suicide Squad would have been like at least a little bit fun. Yeah. No, Batman vs. Superman, at least there's parts that are enjoyable. Yeah. Like, I thought, I thought the Batman exact... Batman was great. I thought the exact same thing. I, ha- I, I, it took me forever to watch Batman vs. Superman, just because I was... I don't know. Did I, you watch the Ultimate Edition? I wanted to wait, yeah. yeah oh, I didn't, yeah. I didn't watch the Ultimate You so, should. It, it's actually a better, even though it's longer. Yeah. It's, it, it makes it's more It's like sense. three hours long, yeah. but it, yeah. it... I don't know, I... So, oh god, Martha! And I had heard so much. That's stupid. <laughs> I heard so many bad things about Batman vs Superman. But we're, we're, talking, we're talking about Suicide Squad, right? Well, I just want to—I just want to that... precursor to I—I I watched Batman vs Superman. We're all Superman. yelling, by the way. Yeah, I know that's yeah. what happens. Yeah. I watched Batman vs Superman the day—the day before I went to watch Suicide Squad because yeah. I was like, I hadn't seen it yet. I saw Batman in the trailer, and so I'm like, I know this is probably going to tie in in some way, so I should—I should watch it. So I watched Batman vs Superman. I was like, you know what? Wasn't that bad. Like, I was expecting, yeah. like, Me Watchmen, too, yeah. you know? Yeah. Like, bad. Yeah. So, uh, then I go watch Suicide Squad, and I was I was expecting... I wasn't expecting it to be, like, a fantastic movie. I was expecting no. it to be a fun movie, you right. know? Like, yeah. Like, yeah, it doesn't It doesn't need to change the world. I just wanted to have no, a good time. No, it doesn't even have to have really a good storyline or anything. Yeah. Like, no, it wasn't fun. It wasn't fun. No. So, like, the for me, God, the, for me the first half... Didn't make any sense, and then the second half was boring. Yeah, I do. I don't understand I didn't the mind villains. Will Smith. And like, you didn't. Did you Will, just say you didn't mind Will yeah. Smith? No. Okay. That's what killed the movie. Is is Will Smith is just so Will Smith. That's true. He can he only be a Will, be Will Smith. Smith. He just took over. He I'm a, I'm he a hijacked for Will the Smith, movie. Though. Okay, wait. We can only talk. What about Jaden Smith? <laughs> well, he's <laughs> next. He's, they're next week's case. I, I wish this was after Earth 2, Suicide Squad. <laughs> and you're right, we need to stop yelling all at the same time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But so, I think that, like, I think that maybe there's a script out there where Deadpool wasn't... We'll take turns. Okay. There wasn't, like, Deadpool wasn't so sympathetic, and Will Smith's like, if I want to take this role, I want the character to be sympathetic, I want him to... You know, and, and there's a thing, it was like, no one was sympathetic in that movie except Will Smith's character, and that plays into the way Will Smith approaches movies. Yeah. The thing, I, I almost disagree about the sympathetic thing, but, like, I think they're all sympathetic in a way. Like, to, it didn't feel Ooh, like you Captain were... Captain Boomerang. No, 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 listen, listen. It didn't feel like you were hanging out with villains. 
Like, it... it That's it, true. I didn't feel, like, scared of any of them. It's true, yeah. Like, Captain Boomerang, I understand. Like, he killed that guy. But, like... Everyone was just like so Like, Killer Croc is just like, and... he just like... Well, they kept, they kept bringing up Will Smith's daughter. They yeah, kept just yeah. bringing that it was, up. That was, that's that's lazy. That's lazy I motivation. I guess the, the, the worst part is that, like, when has Deadshot ever been, like, the, the main subject character of, like, a collective group like that, when you know? When this shit gets real. Well, I actually, one of the things about Suicide Squad is that, in the comics, is that it's kind of supposed to highlight okay. these... But guess what? Let's, okay, let's yeah. see the comic side. Let's just talk about it as a movie. As okay. a movie... First part made no sense. Flashbacks it, of like it started what? like three times, it had like three different beginnings, and I'm like, just move. move it, ahead. it was what, amazing. One it was of the amazing biggest, how bad it was. Yeah. One of the worst parts of it was how they just shoehorn Katana in. Yeah. It's just like, oh by the hey, way, here's Katana. Yeah. Oh yeah. This person get on the plane with us is Katana or the helicopter. It's like, yeah. oh yeah, this Katana. Uh, she captures souls in her sword, so, and then like a little bit later, it's like, yeah, her husband's sword, soul is in that sword. Oh, just the okay. biggest part about her. Yeah, no big deal. Okay, so and like, and I used to collect Katana comics, so that drove me nuts. Like that. Yeah. Me more than I think than even the normal person. It's like yeah. that really fucking irritates so, me. So and, and the, the, <laughs> the flashbacks in the movie, especially hers. Do you remember that TV show? Um, where it's about uh, a cold case. <laughs> the flashbacks seemed like that. They seemed like really cheap, and they didn't actually say like anything. Like reenactment yeah. type things? Or... I no, never watched Cold Case. No, it's just like, because just like, like her flashback that explained her, yeah. it was like just a bunch of Japanese business guys, yeah. and she killed some. And, and she one, killed yeah. some, yeah. And it was just like, there's that I didn't get, I didn't get information, I didn't get a feeling, it didn't look cool. So much pointless stuff. Cheap. Everything looked cheap in it. Like, why were two major parts of the movie done in a restaurant with no people? That really confused me. Yeah. Wait, why, which... When... So the part when, like... When she's going when through the Har- fire? When, yeah. when Harley's, like, pouring shots to everyone, right? No, well, no, 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 no. When, well, uh, because the security had kicked everyone out because they were all high level. But okay, which, okay, again, okay, makes okay, no okay, sense. What makes no sense is it makes it a cheap movie. Yeah. It's because we want people in a... Like, a, they should have just been in a government building, like because yeah, the idea is like no, they're too. Actually, they, they're too high. that scene shouldn't have been in a movie because having someone just tell you about characters is not interesting. Yeah, yeah, that's totally it's true. Really yeah. oh, that's, it's really boring. It's really. And bo- now I remember what you're talking about. Yeah, <laughs> they were the king and queen of Gotham. Yeah, but okay, I never saw her and the Joker do a crime. No, nope. I never saw. Like, let's you know what? Let's talk about that Joker for a moment because what a confusing version of the Joker for such a he doesn't interact with Batman. He's in it for like a negligible amount of time. He shouldn't have been in there. Wait, why were they advertising Joker yeah, so much in the he's trailers? Popular. And, because Jared Leto oh, is so handsome. Let's take a let's take a really <laughs> interesting character that people love and just make his entire storyline. He's in love. Yeah, that's so fucking yeah. boring. Yeah, god damn it. None of it made sense. None of it made it was sense. Horrible. And then the, then the end was just like. And then Margot Robbie's a terrible actress. On top of it, I didn't mind her. Yeah. I thought she was written boring. I thought they gave. Yeah, I mean, her... that's the problem too. And then yeah, I thought they like the whole like oh I hear the voices doing this like. It's okay. like I'll say that this for me the very worst part of the movie was when uh, Rick Flag, who is the most boring character, character. Yeah. yeah, I'm in love, I'm in love, like, and the most boring actor, yeah, yeah, and he's like uh, he breaks his thing, he's like you're all free. And Captain Boomerang runs out. I'm like, oh, that's actually kind of funny. Yeah, that was really yeah. funny. But then he just shows back up. Yeah. And I was like, you yeah. ruined it. You it's yeah. like, you ruined it. <laughs> so was like, that was actually, like, I thought that was a funny part of the and movie. It, it just his character. Yeah. It made sense. The, the, he, and then, then also, like, like, what did he do? He just, he, he had a boomerang with a camera on it. Yeah. No, so that's what I was about to bring up. One, that was a Samsung, like, because it was just a Samsung yeah. phone. And two, he throws it, but then... It's like hovering. It like where's the camera on it? And somehow it's centered and not moving around. Yeah. It's pretty much just a all of a, apparently it's just hovering there. Right, like, and the camera would just be like spinning. Yeah. It made me so mad. Like there like, you have all this sense. military technology and you yeah. put it on the boomerang. This and the slipknot thing was so stupid. Was, I, mean, I knew that he was only in there so they'd show that they killed one. Because have you watched the animated assault on Arkham? Nothing it's, worked. The yeah. animated Nothing Assault on Arkham is a is a Suicide Squad like animated, animated. movie. Okay, it's excellent. DC, it's fucking excellent. DC's Go watch that. Animated pictures are great. Not recently. I Son of Batman and like I haven't seen Black- Son of Batman. 
Uh, 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 I like I like Dark Knight Returns. One oh and two. yeah, it's great. Uh, liked uh, Batman, uh, Superman. Yeah. Uh, Public enemies. Public enemies. Yeah. Great. Year yeah. one is really good. Yeah, year one's great. Oh, they're all Ryan good. Christen, yeah. But so watch Assault on Arkham. It's Kevin Conroy as Batman and and Deadshot. Kevin, Kevin Conroy is the best Batman. Uh, yeah, he's my great. favorite Batman. <laughs> it's so good, and like they should have just fucking made that. It's a perfect Suicide Squad yeah. movie. I'm Sam, so mad. Sam, uh, you don't drink coffee. I do not drink coffee. So I'm not going to ask you your coffee in Seattle. What the fuck do you drink? But I'm going to ask you, I'm going to ask you if there's one celebrity that would die, that would drive you crazy because there'll be such an outpouring of sympathy. Like it'll you can't say Jaden Smith. Yeah, you can. That's actually a really fucking great answer. <laughs> oh, because Jane Smith's gonna, like it's gonna be like bath salts on the French Riviera. <laughs> what celebrity would you be bummed out if they died? Because everyone would be like, "Oh, I'm so sad," and you're like, "That person fucking sucks." And I don't want to hear about Kanye. Anymore. Probably. Ooh, that's a great. I hate answer. that fucking guy. I yeah. really hate that guy. It. He's just a terrible person. You know he was almost dead shot. No, no, I'm no. Just kidding. I was gonna say <laughs> that would have that movie would have been great. That'd have been great then because I wouldn't have seen the movie. <laughs> it's one of my rules. I remember after I saw me and my friend walking up a hill, just like dejected. Like I was like, he was like, "What are you doing tonight?" I was like, "I'm going home." Like I, don't know. <laughs> I, don't know I was like, like, "What are you gonna do tonight?" You're like, "I just, I just feel." But, it was yeah, like eight thirty. I was like, "I'm just gonna go home." I really wanted, and the crazy thing was, is because everyone said the Batman vs Superman was so bad when I saw it, and it, and I was like, you know, it wasn't too bad. I was like, so Suicide Squad is gonna be all right, you yeah. know? Like this is gonna be okay. Like DC's finally gonna start getting some momentum, maybe, you know? No. Gross. Fuck you. <laughs> Not right, we really need to wrap it up. Yeah, we, thanks for, hey, listeners, thanks for uh, uh, listening to us bitch about Suicide Squad. <laughs> Uh, yeah, like that's not going to be edited out. Uh, it's been another week, a week of access on purpose. Uh, keep one finger on the pod's button, one foot in the grave. Uh, fuck you for listening.